So next up, we have the men. Oh, the men. Oh my gosh. This was... So everyone I talked to prior to this competition, it was Nathan or Yuzu for the gold. I did not make any bets. I did not make any predictions. But let me tell you something. I did not expect this to happen. This meaning yeah. Yuzu Ruhanyu making mistakes and Nathan going almost perfectly clean in both he programs. Was. He was perfectly clean for both programs, 100%. Um, this was surprising. People and... have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so who do you, uh, who, who should we talk about first? Because... Maybe I'll just start. It's, it's hard to focus on one or the other because the conversation revolves around both, but maybe I'll focus on Nathan Chen, the champion. So I'm actually biased. I really like Nathan Chen, but I don't like to think of myself as someone who always has bias when I'm giving an opinion. I can remove my personal opinions. But I think Nathan Chen did his job here. He's been undefeated for quite some time now. This is his third Grand Prix championship that he's won. And he slowly added uh, more quads to his repertoire this season. And it was nice to see him deliver. They look really easy. Um, he's so calm and collected out there. And now on the flip side, because you know, no one has seemed too biased, but I do love him. I will say he does lack transitions. His skating, overall skating skills have improved. He is faster. I even see some improvement in his spins. So I really like his last one in the short program, but there clearly is a lack of transitions it's a very different style of skating from Yuzu Ruhanyu, and I will say I agree that the program component marks are inflated because I do still think there's room for him to grow artistically this season. And if he's already getting mid nines, that's pretty much the judges saying you're already there. I don't think that's the right message to be sending anyone, whether the skaters are favored or not. But that's my take on Nathan Chen. I will say I don't love either of his programs this season, but I loved how he performed them at this competition. No, Minus the yeah, outfits. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was about to say, I was going to say, we got that little conversation there, just because I know you're a fashionista and yes. Um, but no, I couldn't agree with you more uh, with your, just your takeaway from these performances with Nathan. First thing I have to say is, holy shit, like, this is a kid who is a sophomore at Yale. Uh, he's, I think, studying statistics or oh my gosh. some incredibly difficult major. He is pretty much being coached by Skype and also self-coached most of the days. And he came out here and did a clean two programs with seven quads and two triple axles between them. It was fantastic. It was out of this world. I actually really do like his short program this season. Oh. I've liked his short programs the last couple of seasons, starting from Nemesis. Each one for me oh. has just been, I don't know. I just really just enjoy them. I think he adds a lot of creative choreographic flourishes in the shorts, especially in his spins. Like there was one point, uh, I think it was last year where he did these little hops out of his spin mm -hmm. that hit the music completely perfectly. But here he did a clean quad lutz to open. Oh. That was absolutely beautiful. It, it hit the music uh, absolutely perfectly. I think in uh, the short program, by... I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. it looked like he was a little hesitant going into it. So I was like, oh no, it's going to yeah. be a disastrous one. But no, it was smooth with that landing. It was interesting because when he was, all his entrances going into the jumps were pretty tentative. It almost looked like he was slowing down at times. And I was like, Nathan, like, don't slow down too much. You might fall. You might have to put a hand down. You might not get the rotation. But it was wonderful. Uh, the triple axle, what, the, the landing for me was just a little bit slow. He didn't have as much speed going out of it, but it was clean. It was clean. And, and he had a quad toe, triple toe in the second half. That was absolutely wonderful. He's worked on the spins a little earlier this season. I think he was getting a couple level twos and level threes. Yeah. He wasn't having the clearest positions. He has a beautiful uh, side sit spin, spin position. Mm -hmm. It's just marvelous. It, it really accentuates his body line. He has these wonderful like little light arm movements that go with it. Uh, the footwork, the step sequence in both programs, I thought was, you know, out of this world. It, incredible. I was taken away. Like, it, it took my breath away to see him just hit it out of the park, especially because his last two Grand Prix, he won. Mm -hmm. He won clearly, but neither of them were clean. 
Now, I don't think Nathan does so well at his Grand Prix. Like, that's not where he peaks. And I think he's aware of that. I actually think he's okay with that, too. Agreed. Agreed. It looked like he kind of came in here. And I, I, every, I was kind of... I was re I really thought it was going to be anyone's game between Yuzu and, and Nathan because we hadn't really seen them head to head since Worlds. We hadn't seen them head to head at this time during the season since 2016. And Nathan just came in here and he just looked calm. Yeah. He looked ready and he just got the job done. And it was really impressive. As far as the scoring goes, so this is a little, I have a lot of thoughts about this. And yeah. you, you can follow me on Twitter. So. Yeah. This frustrate, these kind of cases frustrate me so much in comparison to a case where someone is so egregiously overscored that the podium changes. In those cases, I do get mad, but I'm still like, okay, you know what, Your fa my favorite did really well, and this person, like, I don't know what's going on, but always a bunch of conspiracy theories starts going in the back of my head. In this case, I thought Nathan, he got the win fair and square. He's played two clean programs. User made some very, unfortunately, major mistakes and technical errors in his programs, but it's almost like the feeling and this like the positive emotions I have from seeing this incredibly talented 20 year old young man do these, like break all of these, my expectations in the sport is somewhat dampened when I look at his scores. Like specifically looking at the short program in skating skills, he got a 9.43 average and in transitions, he got a 9.25. 9.25. Yeah. And that's high. I'm sorry. I just, it, yeah, it's, and with, when it comes to performance and interpretation, those are, to me, inherently more subjective, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you might have personal opinions about the style of music. You might have personal opinions, the choreography. I, I know his choreographic sequence in the free skate has uh, been a bit polarizing in the pop sequence that Nathan has in the free skate, but Personally, I think that those points, I do see him getting midnights. I do think his performance was exciting and it was captivating. But when it comes to something like skating skills and transitions, which are more objective, you can identify transitions. You can count transitions. In the free skate, if you compare it to what he was doing earlier on this season, he took out his, tra he was doing a yeah. traveling three turn entry into his solo triple axel early in the season. He doesn't have that anymore. He took out a couple of other transitions for uh, into some of his quads. He's added quads as well, but most of them have beautiful, they have beautiful textbook uh, uh, entries going into them, but they're not difficult. They're not creative. There's not really yeah. any difficult transitions going into them. In the short program, some of his spins had some really cool transitions, but in the free skate, I didn't see as much of that. I yeah. saw really clean uh, really impressive skating and I think his technical score should reflect that but then I'm seeing scores in the mid nines for transitions when I can count them on one hand and that's funny how you mentioned like that skating skills can be subjective when I think of skating skills for me I look at Patrick Chan or someone like Jeremy Abbott in the past I want to see super deep edges and very few crossovers and like yeah. Nathan Chen isn't kind of in the same realm as those artists yeah. in my book and so it's interesting to see him get such high scores there but also great of execution we can agree that when he does the jumps they're impressive no transitions or whatever but do they really deserve to be getting you know fours and fives all the time you know and that's another thing because i when you're looking at so looking at a jump when grading the jump there are six different criteria for giving it positive GOE, you know, good height and good distance, effortless route, good takeoff and landing, you know, uh, creative entry and exits, uh, matching the music, you know, it's like you have all these different options you can give to the jumps, but there are also guidelines for deducting from them. Mm -hmm. So you may have a part, like, for example, with that triple axle, it may be a textbook jump, but there is a guideline to deduct for a long setup. Yeah. Or not a long running edge coming out of it. Exactly. For not having the cleanest landing. So there are times where I see some of these, for example, to get over a plus three, a good takeoff and good landing is one of the criteria. 
for some of the jumps, maybe his landings, he lands a little bit flat on his blades. He may not always get the best running edge. But then I see he's getting plus fours and fives for that element. And I'm wondering, is there a disconnect between what the judges are considering and what I am as a as a viewer, as a fan is considering? And I think the biggest reason that today it bothered me was because there was a direct comparison to two other top skaters. So you can't really use the argument of you can't compare between events. Everyone's the same events. That's and right. when you start to see the GOE compared between them, you look at the different elements. So I have Some a question for you, Na. We're going to move on to Yuzuru Hanyu. I'm going to ask you the hot question. Do you think he was underscored? So I actually, this might be a, uh, this might be a little bit of an unpopular okay. opinion. So in the short program, I thought he was scored very fairly. He got a 97.43. And when I scored him, I had him around a 97.3. Exactly. So it was... When you miss the combination. Exactly. You know, his skating is fantastic. The quad cell and triple axle to me, were both plus five elements. Absolutely perfect. He got a level four step sequence, which he has struggled a little bit at times doing uh, throughout last season, even this season, in the short program. His spins this time were out of this world. He is, to me, the most complete skater in IJS history. But he missed a combo. And going and up against major... Nathan Chen, you may exactly. not want to do that. <laughs> and there is, there are rules in place that do cap your PCS when you do miss a combo. So he couldn't get over a 9.75 in uh, skating skills transition to composition, and he can't get over a 9.5 in performance and interpretation. Now, generally, these rules don't really matter because most people aren't, they're not going to be getting a 9.10 a in, you know, uh, performance or interpretation. User is one of the few skaters who, when he's on, can. So those mistakes make a much bigger impact on his PCS. So I actually think in a short program, he was scored really fairly. Now, the free skate is actually where I will, I'll put an argument out that I did think he was a little underscored. Uh, When I was looking at the protocols, there was one judge that was giving him, didn't give him anything higher than a plus three for any elements. Uh... You know, they didn't... They Judge gave him a number plus, three. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, they gave him a plus... Just a plus two for that opening quad lots, uh, the quad loop, and the, the following quad lots. Yeah, Judge two for a quad loop and one for quad lets, which, come on, really? They were beautiful. They were textbook jumps. I was just taken aback by those the GOE that he received those elements. Uh, they gave him a zero for his quad toe double toe in the second half, which while I do not think that was his cleanest element in the world, it wasn't like it didn't have the same snap and beautiful body position because he did pop the double toe. It was supposed to be a quad toe triple toe plan combination. It wasn't a zero, mm-hmm. you know. It was uh, the judge gave him a minus five for his three jump combination to second half. That was half. not a fall. Like, what no, the heck? it was like a step out, an under-rotated step out, and he got a minus five for it. Well, there are skaters who fall. Yeah. So even when I was trying to follow the geo, there was nothing I could argue for those scores. And there were other people who, uh, you know, judge, I believe this was, uh, the judge from Italy gave him 8.75s in performance, composition, interpretation for PCS. And... Yeah, I will say one thing that's good about IJS is that the highest and lowest grade of execution mark is thrown out in the average equation. Uh, And I I just mentioned that because one of my other friends last week did not know that. So I thought I would just put that out there. But still, we like everyone to receive fair marks, whether they're thrown out or not. No, you're actually completely right. Because I was thinking in my head, I was like, okay, well, what these marks are accounted for? The problem is that these are two different judges who kind of had marks that were, in my opinion, a a little low, even for when I take into what I consider, like, reasonable marks. Mm -hmm. I do, skating is, unfortunately, it is pretty subjective. The judging in skating is subjective. Even the guidelines in the handbook, very good height and very good distance. What does that mean? Are we going for exceptional height? Are we just going from higher than average? 
like, am I going to be deducting if someone has an average jump? What does that exactly mean? Good takeoff and good landing. Okay, if someone is doing a lutch jump, is a good takeoff a deep outside edge? Or if they have a slight outside edge, is that still fine? Like, it's supposed and to be... who's holding these judges accountable? Making them explain their reasoning ever, which is never. <laughs> exactly. So we end up with these cases where you look at the scores and as a fan, these judges who are well-trained, who do have so much experience in the sport, who generally are people who competed at the highest levels nationally, internationally, but at the same time, you have to explain to me why Yuzuru is getting a nine in transitions and Nathan is getting a 9.75 from the same judge. Yeah. Yes, Yuzuru did make major errors, but... And I'm looking here. So he singled the triple axle and he did have an under rotation. But in the free program segment, he's well over like almost 30 points below Nathan Chen. So I'm starting to think if he had been clean on those elements, it still would have been really close, which is interesting to think so about. What's kind of sad is that when I so Nathan in his original plan program content was going to do a quad toe Euler triple flip but he decided to change last minute to a Euler triple sal probably because it would be it's a little bit of an easier jump for him and it allows him to go clean had he gone for his original layout even if he were clean and Yuzu got perfect PCS Yuzu would have lost to him here mm -hmm. based on the ways the judges we're scoring and Nathan has improved so much artistically. Yeah. His skating skills have gotten stronger. He used to have really, really, really stiff knees when he was trying to go across oh, the gosh, ice yeah. and they have gotten softer. Like I'm seeing the improvements in him, his posture to me, his arm movements are so like, I'm really enjoying him as a performer and I'm really starting to see him as an artist, but you can't tell me that a five quad Nathan and a five quad Yuzuru are on the exact same field. Yeah, I let alone that he'll beat yeah, Yuzuru. Yuzu is really close to what I consider the gold standard of skating when it comes to basic skating qualities that you know all skaters should learn. And it's just so interesting to think of how things have turned out. That being said, I feel like I always go on and on about how great Yuzuru Hanyu is, and you know. We always notice how great his skating is, especially in live and competitions. But yes. one thing Brahim said last week in our preview that really got me thinking was that his one pet peeve of Hanyu, and he loves Hanyu by the way, is oh, that he I tends <laughs> to look down. And I noticed that a lot, especially in the free skate. I was like, okay, Yuzu, you're an amazing skater. You know, look up a little bit, just look up. Agreed, a hundred percent. No, uh, Brahim and I actually were both at Autumn Classic this season, so we saw him uh, in live in person there, which was an out of this world experience. You also saw him Skate Canada. live in, in Canada, so uh, at Skate Canada, like I said, he does have a bit of a tendency to. I think sometimes he's getting so focused on his footwork and making sure that everything is pitch perfect. Because he does do so many transitions. Yeah. Because he is doing such complicated footwork. And difficult. Is very difficult. His pattern is insane. It, and when I have free time, I want to go and just draw his pattern for both of his programs. He, he, he changes the layouts so often that I just, I feel like I may waste my time a little bit. I, I don't. I don't think I can mentally add in a quad axle anytime soon into a pattern. Um, but he does sometimes because he's so focused on looking down, he's not engaging as much with the audience and he's not engaging as much with the judges. And I do think that these things work against him. Also, this is something that really shouldn't be counted, but it is. Unfortunately, he is repeating both of his programs from last season. Okay. And I think sometimes the judges, at least from judges who I've spoken to uh, in my day-to-day -day life, do compare you to your own very best when... PCS and GOE is supposed to be scored in a vacuum. There are supposed to be these objective guidelines, you know, deep edges, speed, multi-directional skating, one foot skating for skating skills, versatility and quality of your transitions, the difficulty of your transitions, you know, musical timing and interpretation. These are all supposed to be graded in a like unrelated vacuum. 
you are going to get this score based on what you skated today. It doesn't matter what your name is. It doesn't matter what medals you've won. It doesn't matter what country you're from. Just based on your performance. But that that's not happening. And it doesn't happen. I think that sometimes people compare Yuzuru to his very best. And he's been competing at in the senior circuit for almost eight years, I would think. Oh, I think so eight years long. now. So... I think that they're, I do think they're a little hard on him in comparison to the rest of the field. And that can be really frustrating as a fan, where it feels like he has to beat himself at his very best while others just have to be impressive. And that's unfortunate because I do understand the positives of repeating a program, especially being someone in his position. Who was injured, you know, and he was never able to deliver a a, a clean free skate uh, for Origin. And these are two programs that he decided to. Uh, complete as these all these like thank you pieces to mm-hmm. two skaters that he looks up to Johnny Weir with his Antonio short program and Evgeny Plashenko with his origin free skate uh, he obviously has such a deep connection to these two programs and I, I do think that they are fantastic yeah. I just you know it's the, the scoring was just something that really kind of dampened my mood a little bit. I watched both these performances back to back. Oh, also completely forgot this. Uh, today was Yuzu Ruhani's birthday. Oh, yes, that's right. Happy you birthday. You know, happy birthday. Um, but no, it was just kind of watching both those performances back to back. I was so proud of them because Yuzuru landed the, the quad lutz, the jump that he got injured on during the Olympic season and took him out and almost lost him chance of becoming a two time Olympic champion. He brought it back here and it was gorgeous. He landed the quad loop and it was perfect. He landed five quads and he is adding to his technical arsenal at 25 years old. And Nathan Chen came out of here and skated a clean five quad free skate and two clean programs. uh, Like, mind blown this is some of the greatest skating that we have seen in history we are so lucky think, to be watching at this time like a hundred percent but unfortunately when i look at the scoring i just feel like oh i feel frustrated i'm like these they are so good both of these young men are so amazing just score them properly nathan would have won in my opinion one again like which people are completely like have the rights to their own opinions nathan would have won had you just given them the scores that based on what they were doing on the ice yeah. i don't think he should have had a, a 45 point lead yeah and yeah. i also want to note that people skating fans don't have to choose between nathan or yuzu you know no. you can appreciate both but they're um, both in, they, to me we are blessed to be able to watch these two men compete at the same time like they're yeah. both fantastic. And I, I that's another thing that I, I do kind of a little bit want to address is that I, I feel like a lot of times fans get so frustrated with the scoring that they may take it out a little bit on the, the athlete themselves. Don't do that. And it's like, please, like, Nathan and Yuzuru, the respect that they show for each other and the way they speak about each other in interviews is just so refreshing. Uh, Nathan looks up to and is inspired by Yuzuru, and Yuzuru is motivated by Nathan. These are two people who are pushing each other and pushing the sport forward. And I, I really hope that it's it's seen like that in the future. And any frustration with scoring, that's related to the judges. That's yeah, related take to that, that out on the judges because those yes. two athletes, they portray great sportsmanship with each other all the time. And I think they always have done so. Yes, yes, 100%. So, nah, you know what's not an uh, unpopular opinion? Uh, Kevin Amos from France is awesome, and he showed that here at the Grand Prix Final. Incredible. Oh, my gosh. So, that I fell program. in love with Skate Canada. When I saw, like, was he, was he at Skate Canada? I can't remember. Was he at Skate Canada for you, or did you see him? Did he, did he compete at Skate Canada or no? I believe he did, yes. He mm-hmm. did, okay. So I remember seeing him at Autumn Classic Live when he did that program, and... Oh my god, that short program is everything. I don't understand how he didn't get tens in musical interpretation and performance. If you've ever seen somebody who like understands musical timing and knows how to engage with a crowd, it is Kevin Amos of France. That was out of this world. He does so he has like his little his like signature little movements. He has his like 
I don't know, it's like an Ina Bauer, but he's like, like yeah, his legs I don't know how to describe that either. <laughs> what, what, I don't know what that is. It's amazing. He has his aerial that he does at the end of the program. Incredible. He has, the, like, uh, I'm just, I get so excited when I talk about skating. Oh, when uh, he starts a step sequence, it has the snaps and just oh. hits on his spot. It's just every single note it's matched to. This Everyone. is someone who is a dancer on ice. Like, and out here, of this world. the program was completely clean, which it has admit, there's always been like one jump off here, but you know, that doesn't ruin the program. He was meant to skate to Prince's, I think, question for you. It just, yes. it gives me feels that I can only describe to adults. So, 100%, yes, <laughs> And I'm okay. looking here at the protocols, eights for all of his PCS, the judges are on something. But no, so his program, the question of you program to me is just, it's a perfect fit for who he is as a skater. He's already such a great artist. Uh, last se- like last season, both of his programs, he did that, uh, the horns, like almost like cl- club music yeah. for the short program. And then he did In This Shirt, which has become a little bit of a, a newer war horse in skating for the free skate. But his, to me, was by far my favorite uh, interpretation of that piece of music last season. And the short program was fantastic. And he's one of the few skaters who's been able to get a, a mid 90 score of only one quad in the short mm-hmm. program. So that just really shows, you know, his, his abilities. I'm sorry about that. That's just my dad's always called it. Sorry about that. Um, um, what do you but, think of his lighthouse long program? So this is actually something where I've, I've kind of grown to love it more throughout the season. The first time I saw it, I was kind of like, mm. This kind of has a similar feel to In This Shirt from last season. I don't know. It kind of felt like another lyrical, overly sensitive, (laughs) very, like, authentically French program, which I respect coming from him. Uh, But I was kind of worried that it wasn't allowing him to grow artistically enough. But I loved it here. I I fell in love with it here. I also... uh, (laughs) I didn't really like his shirt from earlier on this season, so he's changed the outfits a bit, the costuming a bit. So I think the overall styling is helping with me I actually fall in love with the program more. Uh, the, he good. had a quad toe, triple toe in the free skate, and I never, I don't think I've ever seen him do that combination cleanly. Yeah. So I was like, oh my. And then his quad toe, the second quad toe, he was so close oh, to landing had it. it. He mm. had it fully. I think he thought he had it, and so he's like, "Okay, let me just go into my next element." Just got off that uh, that that outside edge, maybe a little too deep. I just fell down, but it wasn't a distracting fall. It wasn't like he had like a bit of a belly flop or he hit his yeah. head or something. It was just he kept he kept the program going, and his reaction to kiss and cry to the score oh. was top notch. That's kind of why I love to watch skating. I think see. he has such a beautiful soul, and you can see that in him on the ice and off the ice. And I think his free skate really accentuates that quality about him. I think he has more heartfelt emotion in the free, even though I prefer the short program. And oh, the kiss and cry reaction with this coach is, oh, that's so sweet. And the, like, honestly, he got high eights, a pretty much a high eights average in the free skate for PCS. And I was like, I, I think around a nine is fair for you. I think a 90 in PCS is more than fair for you. I think this score is more than fair. And I felt like in almost in his mind, like, he's like, oh my God, this it's so big. And I'm like, you deserve this. Mm-hmm. You deserve this. Sweet. Like you, a 180 plus in the free state is, it should be easy for him. In yeah, my I'm wondering opinion. if his, in his mind, if he was like, that's my score with just a quad toe. I was like, you know, right. you have everything else, buddy. <laughs> and his triple axle. So he, he's one of the few skaters uh, other than Yuzuru Hanyu who could do a back counter into a triple axle. And his triple axle gets so oh, much yeah. height. It's humongous. And so even when the landings get a little wonky because he, like, this is one of my, my critiques with him. His air, so his body position when he goes into some of his jumps is a little scary. Mm-hmm. It, he sometimes gets into a little bit of a lean. And in earlier competitions, I feel like that's kind of what's hurt him in trying to deliver all the jumps. He would have step outs. He would maybe have under rotations. But here, I felt like he was a little bit uh, more careful with his picking technique. And he was able to keep his body a little bit more straight. So he was able to land it a, a bit easier. Uh, the only errors he had in the free skate was that fall on that quad toe. And he did under rotate uh, the triple sow yeah. in his three jump combination. But he hit a clean triple axle in the second half. The triple flip. He got level fours in all his spins and yeah. his steps. Honestly, it's, 
I, I think it would have had him leading in a step sequence here. Uh, Yuzuru, I believe, got a, a level three in the free skate for the step sequence, but, and Kevin's was just mind blowing. Yeah, He's also uh, another thing I always want to comment on him because I feel like this isn't really talked about enough. His spin positions are very interesting. Like, yeah. Dish, he has this one uh, where he puts like his arm through his leg. His leg goes up above his. That's it's right. so you know. I'm just saying it's blessed. Okay, he right. is he's blessed with some great flexibility in there. But I feel like I do think his scores are going up to where I think they should be. But I I still think there's some room for the judges to to really yeah. reward him for. Well, at least he got the bronze medal here, so we don't have to take out our pitchforks. Exactly. I was hoping in my heart, I I really was hoping for this. I thought it was somewhat realistic. He has one quad, he only has the quad toe, can he do it? But he landed the quad toe and he landed his other jumps of quality. And I think this really shows what happens when you focus on the quality of all the technical elements, not just the jumps, but the spins and the footwork, while also giving a grade A performance. It's an example of how that can get you on the podium. Yeah, and I think this is great results for French figure skating overall. Like, when was the last time we saw a really top French male skater? Maybe Brian Joubert? Who yes. was after him a little bit? Was there really yeah. many <laughs> yeah. top men? Uh, yeah, that's right. I so think he's most, yeah, he, he has a lot of potential. And honestly, if he keeps skating like this, there's not that many men who are. There's not that many men who are a solid uh, placeholder for that bronze medal at Worlds. Right here, he got ninety mid nineties in the short program, high one seventies in the free skate. He'll probably be around a two eighty if he's clean. That can get him on the podium. I'm uh, trying Vincent's, to think maybe a healthy Shoma Uno or Mikhail Kolyada could fight for the yes. world bronze. Yes, is Mikhail is Mikhail going to be competing this season? I'm, I wasn't sure because I know I he don't had um think so. yeah some surgery for because uh, his tendonitis. But I heard he's feeling much better from a couple of friends who a couple of my Russian friends uh, who are very much in the skating community there. Um, no, I agree. I think a clean Shoma would be able to to maybe do it. A, a clean Boyang could do it. Um, but. And you know what's going to help not... out Kevin? Is that he gave a statement after the competition saying he is working on the quad sal and he may test it out at French Nationals, which is in like 10 days. Yes. So we'll see it was it landed there. and he landed it in um, a practice session. It's, oh, wow. I didn't uh, see yeah, that. Yeah, I heard. No, so a couple of fan camps caught it and people were just, when does Kevin have a quad sal? <laughs> no, I. Honestly, he is one of those skaters. I always say this to certain skaters, looking at it and being like, okay, this is some, someone who maybe needs four to five quads, and this is someone who needs two to three. This is someone who might need a flip or a lutz. This is someone who needs a loop. Kevin's a good example of a skater who quad, tap, quad toe, quad sal, two triple axles in the free skate, mm -hmm. go clean. And right. he will be a medal contender everywhere. Uh, he Right now, he's my favorite to making that the Euros champion, to being the next Euros champion. Since Javi is, you know, retired and Mikhail's taking the year off, I think he has a really great shot at it. And I was just so happy for him. Yeah, you know who he will run into at Europeans will be fourth place finisher from Russia, Alexander Samarin. I told this to Brahim and he was like, yeah, that's right. I think of him as a more powerful Sergei Voronov. So yes. very focused on the jumps. I can appreciate both of them when they're clean. I never really get full artistic commitment to a lot of the programs they choose to skate to. But when they're feeling it, they usually, they sometimes end their programs with a strong 30 seconds, like out of oh, nowhere. Great. So that's Alexander Samarin. I didn't see that here because... Yeah, he had problems in the free skate. And I know I actually thought he would have won the bronze medal here because there is that contention about him having the highest scored elements in IGS so far, being the quad let's triple toe, let's triple toe. from Ross Telecom <laughs> Cup. So that was judged in the free skate. Yeah, but yeah. you know, we don't have to worry about him <laughs> beating that record here because it didn't happen. But no, we did not see him at his best and i don't think there's a lot of redeeming qualities <laughs> besides the technical when he's not clean i will say i actually prefer alexander to sergey a little more just because he has a little more power if you're going to be a technical technical skater go all out and be technical no agreed i think that that's a perfect comparison i was trying to think who he's reminding me of the russian man uh i was doing 
a bit of a binge watch of Russian nationals in the last couple of years. And Sergei's a perfect comparison. Uh, with Sasha, he has gotten, he has improved performance wise from the last couple of years, which is a compliment, but at the same time, there is still a lot of room there. Um, there is still a lot of room f- uh, to add additional transitions. There's still a lot of room for uh, stronger interpretation of the music. His skating skills are, the basic skating skills are, are fine. Mm-hmm. He is really tall for a single skater. Yeah. And he has these really long limbs, and I don't think he has full control over them yet. I don't think he's really owned being a, a little bit more of a, a beautiful giraffe in skating, like, which is like I like to call it. And sometimes it can be a little gangly when he's skating. And his posture is something that really annoys me when I watch him in his crossovers. It just it looks so choppy. Yeah, I put in my and, notes here, next season, would like to see him work on posture and greater knee bend. Exactly. That was going to be my last comment. Okay. He has a bright, like Nathan's old stiff knee problem. S- Sasha is the new one, the new stiff knee, uh, stiff knee contender of the top men. His quad jumps, he gets such amazing heights on his jumps at uh, the quad lutz triple toe here his he didn't have the greatest landing on that quad lutz but he really dig deep and got the triple toe off of it in the free skate uh but his quad lutz itself doesn't have the greatest edge all the time he's between a slight outside edge and a flat edge when he goes off of it and his body positioning when he does like get in the air can be a little wild. Once again, I think it's because he's so tall. Yeah. It's hard. The, the taller you are, the harder it is to control that. So I, I was a little. I when they saw that he got the uh, the highest yeah. scored elements of all time for his quad lunge triple toe. It's impressive when you immediately see it. Yeah. When I went to slow mo and I started to check off the GOE bullet points. It's a really, like, bombastic, exciting plus two element. That's just really how I took yeah, from it. Yeah, and you know, the landing can sometimes be a little scary and wild. He saves it, which is impressive, but saving a landing should not warrant super high GOE. I think sometimes, like, the, there's, like, a reaction of me being very impressed because I'm, like, some of the, oh, I remember one of my favorite quotes is, good skaters can land good jumps, Great skaters can land bad jumps. So the fact is he's able to save some of these landings. He might be one of the greatest skaters of all time because these landings, wow. Uh, however, with Sasha, because there is a deficit, I think, in the general quality of the skating, and he has yet to really, he's not hes not the performer that like Kevin is or Yuzuru or Nathan at this time or, or even Dima. So he does have to depend on those big ticket elements and they just weren't all there today, you know? The quad flip was a, a bit wonky. He had a really bad step out. He doubled his uh, quad toe attempt. And this is what happens, unfortunately. Like, you have to be such a quick thinker in skating because of the, all the different rules of the jump, uh, how many jumps you're allowed to do in a program or zayaking. He doubled his uh, double toe, and then he went in for a triple axle double toe as one of the nations, which is planned. And he landed a second triple axle double toe but that double jumps in a program, which means that he lost that element and it, it hurt a score. He Right there, he just lost a jump element uh, for his combination. He wasn't able to get a three jump combination out there. So it's just a lot of these things just picked away at his technical points and he ended up off the podium. Yeah, I have a personal saying I like to live by with like work and in life, you learn the most from your mistakes. So, hey, he made the mistakes. Try not to make him again. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. And I do, I will say that for the free skate, so for the short program, he's doing the Blues for Cluck, I believe. The uh, same as, as Nam's music, as far as the program is. I know, I know. And it's, uh, I can see, I can see the efforts. And I think mm-hmm. that is something I am starting to like. I am recognizing a quality in him that I really like, a part of his personality someone who really is trying to push himself. I don't think he is a natural performer in the way that some of these men are, but I do think he's he's trying to choose music that will allow him to engage more with the audience. I just don't, like, there's been a few times, like, there's not, not a few times, there's a quite a few times where he misses 
key musical accents and some of the transitions that he does attempt just don't look like they're being achieved the highest quality so it's just it gets a little messy it looks mm-hmm. a little sloppy and then everything and when everything's a little sloppy even when you do have a higher base value it chips away at it to the point that skaters who are doing two quads can beat you even though you are doing the most difficult quads yeah so the mistakes um, really hurt him here yeah but he is he's still definitely in the running for uh with misha being out this season he's in the running for the, being a top russian man with uh another competitor here so yeah so boyang <laughs> jin of china he is someone i told people he could be third or sixth did not know which one we were going to get because he was like six at skate america and then one cup of China. One cup of China. So it's like, yes. which boy Jin are we getting here? Um, the short program would have said we were getting hot mess boy Jin, but he had some redeeming qualities in the free skate. He did move up one spot. It seems like he's just trying to work out some kinks this season. I don't think there's anything we need to be too worried about because he fell on the opening quad lutz and then landed the quad toe later on like yes. it was nothing. Yeah. No, with G- uh, boy Yang, uh, First things first, I do. I really do like his his the pair of programs he chose this season. Okay. He is doing a Lori Nichols short program, and he's using Benoit for the free skate. Uh, I like the styling of his actual both of his costumes. I think are actually really unique, and I feel like they're actually conveying a story. He has this like beautiful white long tee with like with I don't know if it's gold or yellow appliques for the short program, and then he has. Maybe it's like butterfly wings or such, but it, I like both of his costumes this season. The short program was a, a bit of a struggle technically. He went in for the quad lutz and he 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 dropped it yeah. uh, to a triple lutz that was a downgrade. Like it, he got maybe two points for that. He did go in then for a quad toe triple toe, but uh, he kind of had to fight for it. And he did do a triple axel in the short program that was clean, but I think he lost track of the timing. Because he did a triple axel too early, and he didn't get his ten uh, percent bonus in the short program because right. he was a couple seconds too early. So that actually really hurt him to short. Yeah, once again, all of these all of these elements play when you are competing on the ice. You have to be like, okay, what beat the music I meant? It's one of the reasons that uh, my old coach used to always suggest people go for music with lyrics. So you always know the yeah. lyric that you have to jump at. You always know the lyric you have to set up your uh, your entry into. Okay, you know, oh, when she's about to scream like that high F, that's when I'm going into my flying camel spin. And I think he just missed a little bit of it because of the, the strange pop that he had in the opening elements. Um, I do actually like that music that he's used for a short okay. program. It, it's like a, a nice soft ballad to me. I don't know. It seems really sweet. Uh, I think his posture's improved a lot from when he, he started competing. I have like a, a baby crush on Boyang, so I think I I'm a little bit like... I see that. That's nice to hear. I just think he's so like... I, I think he's just adorable. I think he has actually some pretty good basic skating skills. I think he's learned... Uh, when he started to compete originally, his hands were something that always worked me because he always had like the sickle hands where he didn't really soften the fingers. He would just allow them to just be all glued together. But now I do think he's... I think he's somebody who, if a choreographer tells him, move your hand at this beat, move your arm at this beat, you know, do a beautiful lunge this week, but your neck up a little higher, he will follow every single mm-hmm. instruction to a T. But I don't think he has that natural ability and that natural musicality as much as others. So it does at times look a little put on. And I think that comes with being such a great technician, yeah. which he is. And I think that he's been trying to improve the artistry. But at the same time, I'm not sure if it's, I don't know what it is, but unfortunately he's become a little bit less consistent with the, the jumps, yeah. which are, to me, probably his strongest suit. Uh, the free skate, that opening quad lutz that he fell on, it was a fall, but the actual mechanics of the jump, yeah, he it looked like has it was one of the be best. Good. Yeah, it's huge. He is up there to me. Him and Yuzuru right now have the best uh, quad lutz of uh, the current field. And, you know, the fact that he's able to come back and be that quad toe, dipple toe, I was like, yes, he's back on but then he fell in the next quad toe. So it was just on and off, on and off for the free skate. He did do quite well, I think, for the, the back half of it. He needs to also add a bit more transitions, in my opinion, though. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, he had a really beautiful transition going into his triple flip, triple toe, where he did um, a, sim- a little bit similar to like Lisbeth took to Mishva, where he does a bit of like a, a back spiral position going in. Uh, <laughs> but then when he goes into his triple axles, it's a bit of a long setup and it was it's it's on and off for him at times it's on and off yeah. like okay focus on the artistry emote to the audience okay let me get in right ready for this jump check land it okay back to performing and it's jarring to watch but all in all i think he did a pretty a pretty a valiant comeback from the short program he qualified for the final so that's big Yes. Yeah. And you bring up a good point about his choreography. You know, I think it would be good to have a choreographer tell him every single thing to do. But Lori Nichol doesn't have all the free time in the world. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) And then the second half of that program, he did sell on his own. And yeah, I think the second half of his free skate was much cleaner than the first half. So kudos to him. (laughs) Yeah. Agreed. But the one thing I will also say, though, is that I, I actually, Benoit choreography, I have, I think was different. There's been a few skaters where his choreography, I feel like he's hit it out of the park. It's been fantastic. Uh, Kaori Sakamoto's free skate to the piano music uh, from last season is a, an example of something I've had, I've seen from him that I loved. But sometimes I think he, he likes to have, and he talks about this in his interviews, he loves to make like interesting shapes with the skaters and sometimes he likes to over extend, like accentuate their uh, some hunchiness. Uh-huh. And this happened with Brady Snell, I think, a few times. And there were a few times in the, sh- the step sequence with Boyang where I'm like, maybe a skater who struggles a bit with their posture shouldn't be. <laughs> we shouldn't be emphasizing that uh, as much. But I do piece of music I, I i haven't really heard those i've heard those pieces of music for other skaters before i think he is a, a much stronger artist than he was when he first debuted on the senior circuit i think that he could be a contender but he really needs those jumps to be under control and yeah you know yeah. what, Nod? this is so cute to hear from you because i'm not a fan of either of his <laughs> programs this season but I, I like him as a person and i think he has potential as a skater but i'm like bring back spider-man and bring back okay. you know the the tiger one Totally respect. Totally respect. I did love the uh, um, his both Spider-Man program and what was that from? It's from a great movie. Oh, I'm not. That he, his buff. Olympic program. I can't remember, but oh, I think it's. I cannot remember right now, but I do love both of those programs as well. His short programs to me have generally been out of this world. I <laughs> give him plus GOE for the gold blades on his skates. He decided he really needed something that was a signature for him, and I, I think that's become his signature. <laughs> And I just think it's so cool how he just goes rocks gold blades for both his programs. I just think it's so confident. It's like a nice <laughs> little pizzazz. Yes. Is there anything you want to say about Dmitry Aliyev of Russia? Um, just really unfortunate free skate because he was fourth after the short program. Yeah, that Dima Dima. Okay, I just got to say, I love him. He's one of my favorite skaters, but he is a one of, like, he is a sensitive dramatic performer he's my favorite russian he he, i just love him i love his skating but that free skate was it just was not his day it wasn't his day i was so looking forward to his free skate is it sound of silence yes because he knocked it out of the park at nhk trophy like absolutely perfect i was like i can't wait to see that again and we got the opposite even to the point where he fell on his last spin. I was like... No. So this is one of my biggest criticisms with Dima. Uh, with him, I love... So he's doing the Mozart... Like a Mozart opera, like rock opera for the short program, and the Sound of Silence free skate. And he really owns that character, right? He's wearing the red velvet, like, blazer top, and his facial expressions, his body matches the pieces of music. It's all so impressive to me i'm being sold i'm like i'm buying it yeah. i'm buying what you're telling me and then i just wrote in all cap work on your spins i am like a spin savant i Ooh. love determining the levels i love looking for interesting positions i love good centering i am obsessed with spins and i'm like dima you cannot be my favorite russian man when your spins are looking like this okay the you know what needs to happen? We need to send him to Lucinda Rue. 
Oh, listen, to, <laughs> please. Okay, I I don't know what you. I think we can do a GoFundMe for you yeah, right? for him. <laughs> just just get this boy great spins. I just when I think of great artistic skaters, I also think of great spins. Yeah. You know, Jason Brown. You can't and, leave out the spins. Uh, Come on, Paris. Like you can't. You can't leave out the spins. And in the free skate, he started out with he landed his quad lutz, which. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, he landed quad the both programs, I believe, actually. He landed the quad Lutz. Granted, his quad Lutz is not um my first example of a It's not super high. Tech- no, and uh, the pre-rotation argument is something that can get a little controversial and how much is a really like how much has been overblown by fans versus how much is actually is it true. I do think his is an example of an uh, overly pre-rotated elements. Uh, I just don't think his quad lutz is, to me, aesthetically or technically uh, the most solid element. But he, he landed it here. But then after that, it was just, you know, the quad toe he had to fall on. He doubled his he t- he doubled his next quad toe attempt. His triple flip he fell on. Level two spins with negative GOE. You know, under rotated triple axle. And, and I think he because of that, he was like... Gosh, he was like crucified in PCS. I was like, you can score higher than that. Like a 6.96 in performance, you're capable of higher than that. You you can do this, Dima. But another thing is that he just looked winded. He looked exhausted. A few of the skaters here look exhausted in their program. It's a user as well. But when I was looking at Dima through his footwork and going through that step sequence, it was a bit slow and labored and it, it, it just didn't look like him, especially as someone who tends to give his all during those linking elements. It just looked like he was out. There was no more gas in the tank and it just kind of died at the end of the program. And it was so disappointing because I, yeah. I think this was, he really wanted to make a statement here as a top Russian man. Him and Sasha are pretty close. And I remember being a bit disappointed. I think it was uh, at Bristolicom, Cup of Russia, where they gave Sasha a higher PCS than Dimitri. And I, I was a bit confused. Yeah, I think I saw that too. Yeah, and it was like, okay, um, I understand national scoring, and but they're representing the same country. Yeah. There's and the same competition. Like. Exactly. And it's. I was thinking, I was assuming they probably think Sasha is a bit more consistent, but I think we're all seeing the same programs. I don't really see... <laughs> we have different set of eyes. <laughs> exactly. Maybe we have different tastes, but I, I, I really hope that he just takes a little bit of this, like, this experience. It wasn't a good day for him, but he did make it here. He finished the program. That can be the hardest. Sometimes finishing the worst programs can be the hardest thing to do. I hope he just takes that energy, goes home, meets, does he have a spin coach? I hope he has a spin coach. Just go to them every single day, four hours a day if you have to, and gives us a couple of beautiful performances of Russian nationals. I think Russia has three spots of worlds. If I'm, I might be, I might be wrong. They might only have two now. I can't remember where they ended up. Yeah, gosh, last I don't thing. remember. Yeah, right I'll now. have to check as well because I think Misha came in. Uh, well, Koliada, he came in I think fifth or sixth. He did pretty well, Worlds. Mm-hmm. But I think he has a really good shot of making the teams, and I, I think he's going to have plenty of more times to compete throughout the season. But he really, really needs to work on the step. Of this he really has to work on his spins, and he really has to make sure his step sequence is tighter and cleaner. Um, oh, he almost uh, slipped in his step sequence at one yeah, that's point. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was because I was off his twizzles when he was trying uh, during one of his clusters. It's, with step sequences, you have to do these uh, all these clusters of difficult steps and turns, and he almost stepped out of the twizzle, and it was just all around. It was very lethargic. It was very slow. It didn't cover as much ice as he could have. It was just a really bad day for him. Yeah. So, no but argument I, I there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wishing him the best.